Welcome to Secure AF. I am Keelan Knox. I'll be your host for this episode. And today I am joined by three special people who recently started um, working with Alias um, this past summer. Well, this summer. Um, I'm going to allow you guys one by one to introduce yourselves and tell the audience a little bit about yourselves. <laughs> All right, well, um, I'm Dax Dunbar. I'm one of the interns here. I just graduated high school from Epic Charter Schools Online, and I came from Francis Tuttle. It's where I heard about the internship here. I um, went through their cybersecurity and network defense program over there. Nice. Hi, my name is Alexandria. Um, I'm actually a recent college graduate at Oklahoma Christian. Um, I'm in their dual degree program right now, so I'm finishing out my classes this summer as well as this internship. Um, but yeah, love cybersecurity and loved my time here. Uh, I'm Hayden Goodman. Uh, I'm very similar to Dex. We actually graduated from the same program at Francis Tuttle. Um, I'm, uh, I come from Deer Creek High School, just graduated this year. And uh, yeah, uh, the cybersecurity program at Francis Tuttle. That's how I heard about this very internship. Awesome. So two of you have similar backgrounds, close in age. Um, Alexandria, you are studying a master's? Yeah, so I am. I did uh, computer science and cybersecurity as an undergraduate, um, and then they allow you to apply for like their dual degree for your master's, mm -hmm. like your junior year, I think it's the end of your sophomore year, to into junior. Um, but I'm enrolled in that, so I'm getting my bachelor's and my master's at the same time nice. in cybersecurity. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Hayden, mm -hmm. um, I learned through the interview process for this internship that this was the first interview that... <laughs> very first <laughs> very real first interview. First re real interview. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, and I, I'm going to, I guess, pose this question for all three of you, but how did you prepare yourself for searching for internship opportunities and then also preparing yourself for in like internship interview um, opportunities so searching for interview opportunities like specifically for alias i guess um uh, actually i heard it, about it from our instructor at francis tuttle mm -hmm. and he's like uh you should go apply for this and like this is would be perfect for you it's like a perfect opportunity so i'm like yeah i'll go apply and he helped me through my application process. He looked at my resume, helped mm -hmm. me fix it up where it needed patching. And then actually I told him like, this is going to be my very first real interview. And he's like, oh, like that is not good. Like we need to practice. And he actually took me in, we have a little back room in our class mm -hmm. server, and he actually took me back there. <laughs> and we practiced, practiced, practiced. And uh, going into the actual interview with Alias, it was very different than what we practiced. <laughs> um, it was very formal with I'm him. I'm surprised. <laughs> with Alias, it was very, very laid back. And I, it was not what I was expecting, but I'm not saying that in a bad way. It was, it was very nice, and I got to meet all the great people that work here at Alias. What about you, Alexander? <laughs> um, yeah, so I've interviewed at quite a few places uh, being in college, uh, having side jobs and stuff. But um, that interview at Alias actually reminded me a lot of my interview at my um, my first ever internship in Tulsa. Um, it was very it was very different and it was more like kind of one on one personal, like definitely a little bit more relaxed, which was way more comfortable than a typical like super formal interview right um but as for like finding about this internship um and even preparing um i had a friend who actually worked here before mm -hmm. um that went to my college and it talked about it and even my professor um has raved okay. about you guys and so i was like well, why not just apply and see what happens and <laughs> i submitted my application and kind of just forgot about it until you guys messaged me and i was like oh my gosh this is crazy <laughs> i gotta do this um, gotcha. but yeah for preparing i mean i like to think i'm good with people so yeah. i just kind of wing it a little bit um i will say i did look up like some very specific questions um for like networking stuff because i felt like that would be applicable to the interview and you know just wasn't something that i was super brushed up on at that time but yeah did your experience a bit different dex well, similar to Hayden's, coming from the same spot, I mean, I, especially towards the end of the year, I was looking on Indeed a lot, and then mm -hmm. our instructor brought it up to us, of like, hey, this internship is here, and I guess high school students can apply, or recent high school graduates can apply, you don't have to be coming from college, looked into it more, we'd heard about your company, because you actually came out and spoke to us 
okay. in our classroom, which was really cool. Got to meet Robert and old one of his old coworkers. And from there, I mean, preparing for it, I just looked into the company a lot more and was like, oh, this is this is a pretty cool company. Maybe I'd like to, would really like to apply there. And went to the interview process, and like everybody said, it was very relaxed, very, very different from other interviews I've had. And I liked that a lot, though. It reflected about how the team really is. So based on everyone's, I guess, response to that particular question, it sounds like um, the expectation going into the interview process was far different than what you actually experienced. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, I think gotcha. we um, My next question would be, what do you think made you stand out as a candidate for this internship opportunity? <laughs> uh, well, me personally, I'm a woman, so um, okay. <laughs> I felt like that probably made me stand out. I mean, there's not a whole lot of women in technology, um, and so it's, you know, it's kind of a more niche field, um, mm-hmm. but there definitely are more now. Um, I think there were like six other women in my class, um, so I kind of had that. But also, like, I was enrolled in like a dual degree kind of master's situation, and I'd known someone here before, so like I'd kind of met you guys all a little bit briefly at separate times. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of what made me stand out a little bit compared to everyone else. Well, I'll have a follow-up question okay. for that later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, coming from the same program as some of the other people that actually work here, like mm-hmm. Robert, and then also some people who have had the same instructor, like Hickman, Right. Um, I feel like that definitely helped because um, our instructor over at Francis Tuttle, he has a very good reputation with Alias and a bunch of other companies around the area. But um, yeah, I feel like that uh, probably helped a little bit, his word. And like, uh, because coming into the, the first ever interview, like my first ever interview, I was very nervous as uh, like literally when I left the room like as I was saying goodbye to everyone uh, Higman walks up to me he goes is this your first ever interview and he's like yeah <laughs> I was like yeah he's like yeah. I could tell a little bit he's like but um yeah I think it was pretty obvious from that question alone that he could tell that I was like visibly like shake it up a little bit but like other than that like I think I think I did well in my interview but I mean, I answered most of the technical questions. I mean, so then, and that just goes to show, even if this is your first like job opportunity or internship um, opportunity experience, um, how you prepared yourself for that interview, especially go, sitting with your instructor and basically preparing for the technical questions, that there alone goes a long way in terms of standing out as a candidate. <laughs> how about yourself, Dex? Mm, I have a little bit of a cheat code because I got to talk to you about it on Wednesday, but when we were talking about it you said the passion that shows Mm -hmm. willingness to learn and the passion that shows in this industry is really really what attracts everybody to the specific interview candidates Mm -hmm. and that can be through projects you do or it can be through competitions or even just learning stuff on the side and so just hearing that our passion really did show in our interviews was pretty cool Awesome. Something else, too, that I yeah. forgot to mention. Um, this was something that I talked about with Tanner actually not that long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but just being honest about what we knew and what we didn't know, right? Um, I think probably made us all stand out because, you know, at least from his experience, he's, you know, stated that, you know, you guys can tell when somebody is just kind of making stuff up to oh, kind of, of <laughs> you know, get there. Exactly. So, you know, he he's like, I'm just going to keep asking questions until they don't have an answer anymore. So I think us being honest with what we actually knew and what we didn't know and what we were willing to learn or what we tried to learn um, definitely probably also helped us stand out. I agree. Um, to piggyback on your answer to the question about being a woman standing yeah. out in this industry, um, does that feel intimidating for you be, with there being such a lack of representation from on the technical side in cybersecurity? Right. It, honestly, when I first started like working in tech, um, it was very intimidating. I, um, you know, started in high school working at like a tech internship mm-hmm. um, and I was the only woman back there. Um, and so I worked with all men, which was, you know, fine. But for my first like real job, like it was definitely a little bit scary. So I was like, I don't know what I should ask. I don't want to come off dumb and like 
not knowing. And there have definitely been experiences that I've had where like people haven't wanted to like, I don't know, they just haven't been quite as like friendly, like mm-hmm. they're not as willing. And I don't know why exactly that is necessarily other than just, you know, the field's kind of changing and people are learning to adapt. And, you know, there's also this kind of like tippy toe of like, well, they don't want to, you know, offend me in any way type right. thing. So like, that's kind of hard to work around. Um, but as I've worked in it longer now, and especially here, I am not really intimidated by it at all. Like I would much rather ask a question and maybe look dumb by somebody else mm-hmm. and then learn about that thing right. and not ask and not know at all. It's nice to see um, a huge increase in mm-hmm. representation by of women in this particular industry, especially from technical perspective. Um, even during the interview process, their tissue, it showed that there were more women or more females yeah. candidates who were actually interested in applying for internship opportunities with Alias, as well as other um, businesses or organizations. Right. But then to also have the opportunity to bring someone in with a different perspective mm-hmm. and have that showcase to highlight it in our sock face. Yeah. Um, as far as um, challenges go, and you guys is learning, especially now that you're in the program for the summer, um, could you guys kind of describe some of the challenges that you face so far or highlight some of um, the things or concepts that you may have been struggling with before starting the internship versus now? I could say for everybody, at least that I've talked to, is a big one is always going to be imposter syndrome. Of course. Everybody feels like they don't know anything. And especially working here when everybody's smarter than me, it's like, oh my gosh, am I really excelling here? I feel like I'm making all these mistakes. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, definitely imposter syndrome and and a lot to learn. I mean, I came from school and, and pen and paper is very different than putting it into application. So. Right. Yeah, theory is definitely a lot different than, you know, actuality. Um, I think for me personally, I mean, I've worked with like Linux based systems um, a lot, but a lot of what I've done is like very step by step. Oh, okay, like here's a vulnerability. Here's how you could kind of exploit it. Um, But like I've never I never really had the opportunity and chance to just like, for instance, we did like that um, King of the Hill kind of event. And that was like, I think, really my first experience of like completely open, no reins, nothing instruction of just like go at it, see what you can do. Um, and it was still quite a lot of fun to go through and actually see, you know, okay, here's the steps. This is what I remember. This is what I'm going to have to go back and research and look up. Um, but I think that's been, I guess, more of a challenge for me is learning kind of the practices of, of how to actually be offensive instead of Mm. defensive. Um, cause that's what, at least in my experience is talked about a lot. Like here's all these risks here. Here's all these like you know, things that we have to protect in cybersecurity. But, right. you know, how do I exploit those things? Yeah. <laughs> we do labs in school, too. Yeah. But even They're the labs... handheld. Yes. Even the labs are <laughs> yes. not similar to actually reaching out to Real a customer. Life. Yeah. Like, hey, is this legit? Hey, this is what we're seeing, you know? Yeah. yeah. And also, in most of the labs, they won't even let you do the wrong thing a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have like, to do the right thing. Like, if you right click order. a wrong button, it'll just... They just won't allow that at all. Yeah. But, uh... I love the fact of like being thrown out in the water, just like yeah. like FIFA, like just sink or swim, sink or swim. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like I really enjoy problem solving, and if I can't figure something out, I'll just keep going and going right. and going. And if I eventually like, I'll go to like Tanner or something and like have them explain it to me, or just like I'll hit a point where I'm like, okay, yeah, I cannot figure this out. But that's why we have other people here. It's and everyone's you know, not working against each other, right? Everyone's always willing to help too. It's not yeah. like, oh, I gotta help the interns again. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah. This is, you know, I struggled with that when I was an intern. Or, yeah. I'm curious, um, with the experience that you guys have received thus far, how would you say that has helped you, each of you, with your professional growth? Uh, I think like the actual applying the knowledge that I've learned in school has actually helped me figure out that I know these things because before it's like it's just been a paper I'm just reading words on a screen I feel like I'm not really learning anything it's like did you say what you didn't know what you didn't know (laughs) (laughs) but um yeah the actual like applicability of the the knowledge that I've learned 
previously is it's like when things click it's very nice and right i felt the same way because like i also interned here two summers ago and so going into the internship program i didn't realize or didn't know what i didn't know and i felt though my experience alone helped connect so many dots i felt like i was all over the place every shiny like that shiny object syndrome like going down rabbit hole after rabbit hole this direction this direction Ooh, what's that let me learn more about that i'm curious about that and then finally um once it took like a an approach where okay this is how you do this this is how we do this it's like okay now i see how all this comes full circle <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely agree with hayden and even you um just you know putting it all together um, and getting to actually experience it in real life is much different. Um, and it's, it's at least for me, um, working any internship, but especially this one most recently has really boosted my confidence in what I do know and the knowledge that I have um, because, you know, I'm getting to actively apply that. And, you know, it's just nice to get something right. You're like, oh, yeah, like I actually <laughs> did know what I was doing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's that's definitely been really wonderful and really helpful. Um, and I think also just the connections that we're all making with you guys here and mm-hmm. even um, with your guys' as customers. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really helpful and, you know, uh, for all of us in our professional careers. I will say that confidence is a huge thing. Yeah. I mean, I can get all the certifications in the world but still feel like I know nothing. Mm-hmm. So being able to say like, no, I've been on sock responses. I've been mm-hmm. on pen tests. I've, I've done real forensic cases. That's mm-hmm. been huge for me. Just seeing like, I can actually stumble my way through this <laughs> yeah, it's, and maybe get the answers right. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely different from other internships that I've worked in the sense of like, it's real, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. actual cases and real, real things. My last internship was a lot of grunt work and now I'm on the, on the field talking to customers front face and yeah that's it was different for me to see that um were there any um like training sessions or opportunities with like other engineers in the SOC that you guys can highlight that actually help you um I guess learn a new skill by chance um I'd like to say uh PJ with uh CrowdStrike he was very helpful and very verbose in his mm-hmm. um, in his way of explaining things. I just in general the way he explains things is very helpful. Right. He's he goes very in depth, like with the honey pot, like the he has all his documentation. It's very precise and I like the way that he explains everything. Gotcha. For me I would say Peter's honestly, um just walking us through all of those forensic cases. Um like I never got to do like hands on details like real cases you know we have some stuff like i had a forensics class that i had where you know they were not real it was Mm -hmm. very obvious where to find you know the data and everything like that but actually going through and coming over um those cases and you know phones or computer hard drives and seeing how he images it and walking through the steps of you know this is the software we use this Mm -hmm. is how we do it in this software um, this is, you know, how we can look at more precise information if this per- if this isn't showing up correctly. That has been very, very cool because that's not something that I have ever really gotten hands-on experience in before. I would actually say it when uh, one of the coworkers popped my machine. Was, uh, <laughs> it was very different. Oh, you know, yes. they, if you don't know, you know, we're allowed to mess with each other here a little bit as long as it doesn't disrupt the workforce. Mm-hmm. When uh, I got my machine popped by somebody... They had me do, or you actually had me do an IR report <laughs> on my own machine, you know. So to go through and look at all the logs and everything on, you know, our different EDR and on the actual host machine, looking at the logs and all the different areas, and then actually put that into an IR report on my own machine. And then to make it even worse, y'all had me present it in front of their CISO. <laughs> <laughs> and he ripped me. <laughs> Did he really? I mean, yeah. He was very chill about it. He could have been a lot worse, but he definitely turned it into a learning moment, and that was that was really cool and also really, really stressful. <laughs> gotcha. You, I feel like you gained a lot of <laughs> yeah. a lot of experience just from that one scenario. Absolutely. Um, um, can you describe what a typical day is like for you guys um, as interns here, Alias? <laughs> I feel like there's really never a boring day at Alias. Um, mm-hmm. If we're not doing something very specific that day, there's always some sock ticketing going on. Mm-hmm. 
uh, in between those, like there is some downtime. I like to just go on YouTube and try and teach myself something new. Like when we were going to do lockpick gunfights, I had zero clue how to lockpick before coming okay. to Alias. I literally watched like a 20 minute video on how to lockpick and I picked my first ever lock. Nice. It's, <laughs> it's, it's always that like, even if there is like a little bit of downtime in between something and something, it's like I'm just teaching myself how to do something. Like right now I'm teaching myself how to bash script more efficiently because right. I know how to do it right now. I just not in the way that I want to. So it's just teaching myself more and more. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll piggyback off that because I've, as there is downtime, I go to the um, CrowdStrike University and I'm like, okay, I want to learn more about our, our EDR solution see how we use it you know there's a scripting area with that there's more than just tickets with that there's a lot of functionality in that that i want to learn about yeah using that downtime effectively and being able to use that downtime for things like you know youtubing new skills or going on to you know cisco's uh knowledge base stuff like that yeah that's that's pretty cool gotcha uh, for me, I mean, yeah, just like the guys have both said, I come in and kind of look at the sock tickets, see what we have going on, um, look at any that, you know, we were working on the day before, but I typically just go to anybody and everybody and it's like, hey, what are you doing? Like, anything cool? Right. Um, and I just try and join in on anything like that, like Tanner's working on a red team right now and... Um, you know, getting to help him and work on that and just be like, hey, do you want any help with that? He's like, yeah, you know, maybe you can go do some OSINT and just kind of doing a little bit of mix of everything into the day um, has been really, really great and really fun. Just like Hayden said, there's never a boring day here. There's always something to do. Um, and that has just been so amazing because there have definitely been times at other internships where there are multiple days where I'm just like, I am not doing anything. <laughs> and it would, it would be great if I could have some work. Um, but here there's always work to be found. There's always something to do. Um, you know, like just finding things and being like, what does this do? You know, let me just, you know, mess around with it and see if I can, you know, make it work. Yeah. Um, based on i guess you guys experience like what would you say you take with you from the experience of this internship moving forward um this internship has like we're not even that deep into it but right. i feel like i've already learned so much and it's like kind of like drinking from the fire hose but i mean it's <laughs> it's very controlled in a way i guess but i like going at my own pace i like applying the things that i'm learning and taking that that skill alone, um, being able to apply that knowledge, but also taken from this internship, um, I could say that this was my very first ever real job, and yeah. that alone is, a, I, I think that's a great goal that I had for myself, and I feel achieved in a way. It's like, yeah. that's my very first internship, and then I got my very first, or very first interview, and then I got my first ever internship, and it's like, that alone has boosted my confidence a lot. Awesome. It's crazy because a lot of people don't jump right into cybersecurity from IT, let alone from no job at all, right into cybersecurity. Right. <laughs> For me, um, I this internship has honestly been like my favorite internship that I've ever worked. Um, and that's one because the people here have just been so amazing. Um, and I like it's just been wonderful like day one to all the way to now and I'm sure even for the rest of the, my time here like it's just been great to you know kind of have like a friendship almost with everyone um, and you know it just it kind of feel like every company says this but like it really does kind of feel like a family um, right. and it's just really nice and refreshing um, but yeah it's just it's so wonderful here and m this is like the first internship that I've had that's been like all cybersecurity. so that's also been a big reason why like this is, you know, my favorite. It's been so wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just the skills alone too, like every day you, it, we're doing hands-on, like all the time. And, you know, this has definitely boosted my confidence and, you know, boosted my portfolio of <laughs> what I can do and what I feel like I'm capable of. Yeah, right. definitely the confidence. And then, you know, like a family, everybody's always willing to help each other out. I can't stress that enough. Like everybody's always always willing to help you out i can go to pj and say hey what's going on with the sock what can i learn more about the sock mm. you know i can go to you and be like okay what's going on on the admin side what's going on over here how are all these engagements working together 
and we can go to Tanner. Okay, what's going on with the red team? Like Alex was saying, yeah. you know, Peters will come up and say like, hey, I got a, I got a phone or a computer or something, and uh, let's look at it together. I got to sit in the forensics lab with him and go through a couple of things and say seen a lot of stuff I've never seen before and that has blown my mind how much we get to do here. So. You will definitely see some things you're not used to or accustomed to in for instance. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. But also just the fun too. Like it's just genuinely so much fun to hang out with you guys. Like yeah. we're always doing something you know, I don't like you, to work. you got handcuffed not that long yeah. ago. Like that was that was a really fun day. What other internship can you get handcuffed? Yeah, what, in? what other internship do you have? Break out of handcuffs. And your desk is just a breakout. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely so much fun, especially with all the challenges that you guys have had us do. Like you know, the walk the gunfight, you know, King of the Hill, social engineering, handcuffs, like just OSINT challenges. Yeah, OSINT yeah. challenges. Mm-hmm. Just sending pictures. Where is this? It's so it's just so much fun. What's the model of this plan? Well, you gave me a picture of the landing gear, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, but yeah. Um, I guess to conclude, is there any advice that each of you would give to someone who's looking, since this is a cybersecurity podcast and it's geared towards cybersecurity, is there any advice that each of you would give to someone who's interested in pursuing a career in cybersecurity who's possibly in school, maybe they're in high school, maybe they're in college pursuing a degree, um, or maybe they're in vocational school and they're out there looking for internship opportunities or job opportunities. Is there any advice that you guys would give that person, especially coming from a position similar? I would definitely say, let your passion show, because that's the big thing that got us here was the passion that you all saw in us. So if there's any side projects you can start, maybe you find something on GitHub, or just hack the box anything you can do on the side that shows like yes i'm interested in this but on top of my normal schoolwork i'm also looking into doing other things because this is where i want to be i think that's what i would say is really capitalize on that passion it's huge yeah just to also kind of go off of what dax said for passion like for me i didn't really think about cybersecurity in other any other realm other than like a corporate realm Mm -hmm. you know like computers servers databases all this type of stuff but like even messing around with things that, you know, are typically sometimes a little bit more fun, like modding, you know, video games or, you know, doing hardware modifications like that is also kind of encompassed in that. And, right. you know, even doing things like that, that, you know, are more specific to maybe what you would like is, you know, a huge deal and just really awesome, and especially if like you can, you know, talk about it and show that like it's a big thing for passion. But also I would say like, just don't be afraid. Like for me, for a long time, I was like, I don't know, like if I should apply here, like if I want to do that, you know, like just kind of just throw it out the window. And for me, my motto is just wing it, you know, just, (laughs) just wing it. You'll get there. And what's the worst that could happen? Right. Right. Like they say no. So yeah, I would just say apply for anything and everything. Um, and just, you know, show them what, you know, um, I think that's really the best you could, anybody could do. And be honest. Yeah. And be honest. Don't lie. (laughs) Being honest is a very important thing. Like in the interview, you don't want to just lie to them and then you now you have to go down this rabbit hole yeah. and just trying oh, yeah. to defend yourself in <laughs> yeah, any way possible just be honest just yeah. tell them mm-hmm. like yeah i don't know what that is but they willing to they learn are. yeah right. willing to learn yeah but coming into like my interview i i wish i had like a little like uh, dax has a little home set up with, with servers and his whatever but um i don't have one of those yet but i told them that i would really like to get one but um i basically just talked about uh, my home virtualization set up on my uh, home computer and I just I play around with Linux all the time just playing with all the tools and stuff like that and just trying to learn more I mainly talked about that instead of having like an actual home setup but I'm trying yeah. to show that I am interested in learning I just don't actually have the, the actual tools set up but, but virtualization is a good yeah. thing to yeah, it is good thing to mess with to actually learn that stuff so I guess key takeaways that I'm hearing from you guys is show your passion, right? Mm-hmm. Um, don't be afraid. Put yourself out there. Um, be honest. Be honest. <laughs> be honest. Um, and then also um, get involved as much as possible. Um, if you're in school, um, maybe pursue your passions in projects that may not necessarily be cybersecurity related, such as like the hardware hacking mm-hmm. that you mentioned earlier, and 
just pursue things like that, but also highlight that in terms of how you can showcase that on your resumes mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, I think these are awesome responses. Um, you guys are excellent <laughs> um, interns um, here, and you guys have definitely have been proving your your worth here. You guys have been going above and beyond in terms of like showcasing, highlight, highlighting your skill sets. And because you guys have such diverse backgrounds and skill sets, it definitely adds a lot of value to the team here. Um, so this has been another episode of Secure AF. I'm Keelan Knox, Dax. Alexander. Hey, Thanks for having us. Deuces. Bye.